I think everyone can agree that sanding and post-processing 3D prints is the most annoying and tedious part of 3D printing. So let's fix that. Hey guys, I'm Jake and welcome back to CAD class where this week we're going to be looking into three areas in 3D printing that you can design around to completely eliminate the need for support material. So right at the top, why would you want to get rid of support material? I thought it was there to help us. And that's completely true. Support material allows us to build up sacrificial material that aids in printing our designs so that we can break it off later. That being said, support material can be quite annoying to work with, so reducing the amount of support material that you have in your file should be the goal to aim for. Number one, support material is material. It adds time and therefore money to your print that isn't going into your final project. Number two, support material is fallible and can fail just like your model. If you get halfway through your print and your support material falls over, there's really only so much that you can do, and it's often a lot easier to just bite the bullet and cancel your prints halfway through. That's why anytime I am using support material, I make sure to have two walls. That way I'm almost guaranteed for my support material never to fail. And number three, support material will scar your model. It's not exactly a secret, but post-processing your print kinda sucks. It would be great if we never had to sand or remove any nurdles of plastic on our prints, but we do. And we can greatly minimize the amount of work that we need to do by limiting the amount of support material that we have in our design. On top of support material is a little grid known as interface, which gives a nice surface for your model to print on, but not too much that it welds to your model, making it hard to remove. When you remove interface from your model, it does leave behind a less than stellar surface that you now have to clean up. So this is the challenge. Can we modify our CAD files in some way to reduce the amount of support material as much as possible? Yeah. Every 3D printer in the world, even those ridiculously cheap ones that you see on AliExpress, can print at a 45 degree overhang. This is because every single layer is supported by half the width of a layer below, which is more than enough material to stick to. The problem comes when you make that angle steeper and steeper, to the point where the next layer hardly has any material at all to be printed on and just droops onto the build plate. Now, in most slicer defaults, this overhang angle is set to 45 degrees. Anything more horizontal than that is going to need support material. But I'm going to show you guys that you can push this angle even more to use less and less support material. This is an overhang test. This is a calibration print that we use that starts off at 5 degrees, almost completely vertical, and then slowly in 5 degree increments goes to almost horizontal at 85 degrees. The whole purpose of this print is not to see if you can print it, it's to see at what degree of overhang does it pass your level of quality control. By the way, you guys can get the STL to this file in our Thingiverse and printable pages in the description below. As you can see on the underside, it's not a black and white line of where it goes from succeeding to failing. It's a gradient that will change based on what you deem is acceptable. And remember that the higher number that you choose on here, the less support material that you'll need. For me, I can get away with about a 70 degree overhang angle before it needs to have support material, and I'm completely fine with that quality. But if I'm designing something for a client, then I'll usually reduce that number to something like 65 degrees, just so I can give them a really high quality print. Regardless of whatever angle you choose, that value is what you're going to be typing into your slicer software on the support overhang angle. Take a look at this model. If you kept it at the default 45 degree overhang angle, then your print would look like this, full of supports. But by increasing that value to 70 degrees with no change to the final product, it looks like this. So print out this model and find the perfect angle for you. Holes are some of the most annoying parts in your slicer to fix because most of the time they are so small that they don't need any support material whatsoever. But because technically the very top of that hole is horizontal, support material will always be added. The annoying fix for this is that you have to add support blockers to every single hole, which takes a ridiculous amount of time and is completely unnecessary. So instead of tweaking this file in the slicer, we're going to change the hole itself. What if instead of a hole, we design a teardrop shape? This design concept comes from everyone's favorite Aussie 3D printer, Maker's Muse, where instead of keeping the hole circular, 
Make the very top an angled roof. Go into your sketches and make a circle. Then draw two lines above it. Set them to be equal each other and tangent to the circle. And set the angle between the two lines to be twice your overhang angle that you found from the overhang print. Then you can extrude this profile and see that the inner surface is still a majority circle, except for the top section, which is now completely eliminating the need for support material on this feature. Not only does this design work for holes, but it also works for arches as well. If you're making a project that has a doorway shape, then the top is just going to droop down. By switching your design to a pointed archway, you've now got a successful print. Bridging in 3D printing is a horizontal surface that's supported between two pillars. And dialing in your printer settings to get the perfect bridge is often seen as the benchmark to hit in 3D printing. It's often achieved by extruding slightly less material than normal to essentially add tension to a line, but at a certain distance, it doesn't matter how many tricks you have up your sleeve, gravity will take over and leave you with a droopy surface. The classic minimum value for this is 20 millimeters. Anything smaller than that really doesn't need any support whatsoever. A fantastic trick around this is to very quickly creep up onto that surface with a series of nested rectangular extrusion cuts. On a few printed parts on the Prusa MK4, you can see that the underside isn't flat at all, but looks like a series of stepped angled faces. This is a print that's made by a company that needs to be as efficient as possible on all of its printed parts, and minimizing support material is the name of the game. That's why even the knob was printed upside down so it doesn't need any support material inside it. This trick can be done pretty easily in CAD. Make a sketch over your bridge, draw a rectangle, and dimension it equally from the outer walls. Extrude cut, and continue it in the opposite direction until the staggered hole is plugged. Then when you slice this, only the thin lines are bridged, not the entire face, which acts as a surface to continue laying on more material to cover the surface. That's why I loved building this printer. Every single part was filled with so many interesting design elements that you can tell the CAD engineers poured their heart and soul into to make as an efficient design as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you want to learn more about how you can modify your CAD models for 3D printing, then you can check out our book on Amazon. The link is in the description. And as always, we give away the entire book for free on our website, cadcast.org. If you guys have any other cool tips or tricks that you love to use in CAD or 3D printing, please let us know in the comments below. Cheers, everyone.